This is our Micro Ceramic Etching Tool, or MC Etcher for short. It's a diamond-tipped drag engraver that fits in any CNC that will take a tool with a quarter-inch shank. Drag engravers are unique tools that do one thing only but do it really well, mark a workpiece with an ultra-fine line. A sharpened industrial diamond is fixed to the tip of a spring-loaded shaft which applies steady pressure to your workpiece, leaving a precise scratch on the surface just a few thousandths of an inch deep with a width on the same order of magnitude. You can use a drag engraver on traditionally machinable materials like metals or plastics, but also on materials you can't machine like glass. Both the hardness of the workpiece and the angle of the diamond tip on the tool affects how visible the resulting engraving is. A 90 degree diamond tip, for example, is pretty pointy as far as drag engravers go, and it's good for glass but not plastic as it will dig into the material just a little too much. A 90 degree tip will work with some metals as well, but if they are too soft like with an annealed copper, there can be a noticeable burr that's raised on the surface of the material. A 120 degree tip is a good general purpose geometry for most metals and plastics, since it won't gouge into the surface as much and raise a burr. We offer MC Etcher in both 90 and 120 degree tip angles, either individually or as a set. You can find them now on our store website, shop.carbide3d.com. A couple things to note before using non-rotating engravers in our CNCs. Number one, a drag engraver does not need to rotate to engrave material. Instead, the high pressure at the fine point of the tip gently scores the surface. If you are using a drag engraver on the Shape Oco, make sure you do not turn the router on when you run a program with MC Etcher installed. On the Nomad, you'll need to do a little bit of G-code editing to ensure that the spindle does not turn on. Open up your G-code file in any text editor and remove any line that includes the M3 command, as that is what triggers the spindle to turn on. Note number two, something you should definitely keep an eye on is the spring force of the drag engraver relative to a tool length probe like the bit setter. We recommend disabling the bit setter if you're using a drag engraver on the Shape Oco. But if you'd rather not bother doing that or are unable to do so like on the Nomad, then you should check to make sure that the spring force of the drag engraver is higher than that of the tool probe. The switch on your bit setter should trigger before the drag engraver begins to compress. Failure to check this may result in the drag engraver's length being incorrectly measured and the machine plunging deeper than expected on your workpiece potentially breaking the engraving tip. You can adjust the pre-compression of the spring by turning the set screw. To start, we recommend turning the set screw until it just contacts the spring and then adding between a quarter to half a turn. Tighten the set screw down further if you need greater force. And note number three is that MC Etcher should not be used with a conductive probing solution like our bit zero. The diamond tip is not electrically conductive. We think you'll find MC Etcher to be a useful tool for cosmetic applications. We'll have some more content down the road showing some example workflows for using a diamond tip drag engraver with different software. Until then, good luck and have fun machining, folks.